Alicia Wallace, and I'm the director of Equality Bahamas in the Bahamas. I would say my leadership style is pretty collaborative. I come up with a lot of ideas all the time. And I know that, you know, if the idea isn't owned by everyone and if everyone isn't completely bought in, then people might participate in bringing it to, to fruition, but it would be a lot less fun. You know, there would be a lot less flow of other ideas that could actually improve upon it. So generally I come to my team with lots of questions. What do you think about? What if? How can we, you know, um, and really get that feedback and see how we can really make the best use of our skills, of our time and of our energy to move us toward our vision, which is a world that is peaceful, that is equitable, and that we can actually enjoy our time in this place together and experience pleasure, not just, um, you know, less tiredness and no violence, but actually having time for pleasure. Women have the ability to lead others just like people of any other gender. I, I don't think that there's any question of ability. I think we have to talk about barriers and about stereotypes, gender stereotypes are definitely one of the biggest barriers that we experience as women and also experienced by LGBTQI plus people. So our, our struggles are connected and our push for justice have to be connected as well. People have very limited ideas about what people can do based on their gender and then we live within these boxes. And those of us that are determined to burst out of those boxes face a lot of pushback. So it means that we have to be busting out of these boxes together and really challenging these ideas. And it's not about us, um, you know, over overdoing it or exceeding expectations. There's this idea that we have to prove ourselves in a way that no one else has to. We just have to be able to build trust and to push for justice and understand that the limitations to our opportunities have nothing to do with our abilities. It's about the scales that are on people's eyes and the limited ideas that people have about gender and not just about women, but about men, non-binary people and people about other genders as well. So we have to constantly be challenging all of that. We have to expand our ideas about feminism and the way that we exercise it. I think historically, a lot of feminism has focused on the fight. You know, feminism has become synonymous in many ways with the fight. And I think that's where people get this idea that, you know, feminists are man haters and feminists want to turn the world upside down. And, you know, perhaps in some ways we do want to turn the world upside down and set a lot of this stuff on fire. Uh, but feminism is about so much more than that. And one of the things that we do at Equality Bahamas is really focus on how we can build community and how we can enjoy the work that we're doing. So you see a lot of people doing marches. We just had our march on March 4th. We do it annually. You see a lot of people on marches and they they look angry, you know? Um, and there are so many reasons to be angry, but we also have to make space for joy. And I was recently looking at the pictures, a couple of photos that we have already, from the march on Saturday and people are smiling, people are laughing, they're having a great time. You know, we're chanting really, really serious things. And when we when we do the chants, you know, people look fierce, but along the way it was like, it's so great to be together. I love being in these people's company and I appreciate that there are, you know, like 50 other people on this road with us and that we can walk together, not just physically right now to this one location, but we can walk together metaphorically in our journey toward peace and love and a world free of violence. My day-to-day -day work can look so many different ways. A lot of it is thinking. I try to make sure that I have space in my day to just think. And that could be space for imagining what we do next, 
that space for reflecting on what we've most recently done and looking at what we're doing now and figuring out if we're still on the right track or if we need to pivot. Of course, I also have lots of meetings all the time, um, lots of interviews and press engagement, responding to issues that have come up in the country that require a response of somebody who is um, an expert in the gender space and also working on the promotion of human rights. And then of course there's engagement with community members, which is one of the most important things that we can do. And that's, you know, our volunteer team. That's the people who show up to our events regularly. That's people who might not have ever been able to make it to an event, but are staying tuned to our social media and watching recordings and just being able to share ideas, ask questions of each other and figure out what we can do to really amplify what we're doing, what we can do to increase impact. Cause we're a really small under-resourced organization. So it can get really tough and we really have to think about how we make the best use of the very limited resources that we have. There are so many things that I would change about the way that men think about women. And I think it differs in different parts of the world based on context, based on the dominant religion. So for example, here in the Bahamas, the dominant religion is Christianity. And you know there are many different denominations, but the ones that are the loudest are the ones that think the least about women. And there are so many people in the country who identify as Christian, whether or not they're practicing. You know, they're really committed to these principles and, and the most fundamental uh, uh, interpretations of the, the biblical text. And it means that many men in the Bahamas believe that women are supposed to submit to them no matter what. You know, this very thoughtless, um, robotic sort of submission and that women should not have rights and that men should make more money and they have this idea that men are supposed to be the head of the household. But when we look at the world today and the way that it's been for many, many decades, we know that women are needed. Our income is needed. We're living in a world where one income is not enough. Even if that was some sort of ideal, which is not, it's not possible for a man to make enough money really to support a household with another person, much less another person plus children and put them through school and put them through a technical, vocational or academic um, program post secondary school, um, you know, we have to look at the way that the world has changed. And beyond that, you know, bringing in intersectionality, which I have to note is a term coined by, by Kimberly Crenshaw to look at the intersection of blackness and womanhood. We have to keep in mind that black women have always worked. There's never been a world where black women can just, you know, be at home and take care of the home only while the black man makes all the money. We have always been working and always still been responsible for the domestic and the care work. And one of the things that I think that we really need to change, the thing that we really need to break down is this idea that domestic and care work is for women to do. And there might've been a time where it made sense for those women who didn't have to work, for that to be their responsibility while men went out and worked and shared that money within the household, recognizing that the work that women do that's unpaid should be paid work and that it's work that has economic value because it supports um, economic production. Um, and so some of the, the ways that we're doing that are talking about women's um, humanity because it gets lost and talking about the importance of sharing within households, within families. But also we're going back to the beginning and looking, for example, at uh, maternity leave. And in the Bahamas, we have about three months of paid maternity leave once, you know, once a woman is pregnant and some of that is taken before and some of that is taken after the child is born, but there's no paternity leave. And if a man wants to take any time off after a birth of his child, he can only use the five days of unpaid family leave. Mm -hmm. So already we are setting up a dynamic where people believe that women are supposed to do this work. They're the ones who get the time off. So we really want to see not only women having a longer maternity leave to support them in their healing and bonding with their child, but also that 
men get leave or other parents, non-birthing parents get leave as well so that it is encouraged that they take part in this domestic and care work. To the next generation of women and girls, I definitely say, be fierce, be fierce. You know, a lot of people will say, be fearless, but let's be real. Fear creeps in there for so many different reasons. When you get involved in this kind of work, when you declare that you're a feminist, when you behave like a feminist, when you push for rights, there will be pushback. You know, there, there might be a lack of funding. It might be that you're not able to hold a job because your views are so controversial, but press on, be fierce, believe in yourself and don't allow the fact that you might be a minority group make you believe that your position is not valid. We are working toward a better world, a better future. So continue in, in that quest and be sure to connect with other people and do it together because the more fierce people work together, the easier it is to push down some of these walls and the less we feel alone and the more we're able to build a culture of community care.